For the past year, we've witnessed the ridiculous price increase of lumber, which resulted in an almost $40,000 average price increase for new construction homes built all across the US. Some people had to make a tough decision. Should we hold off until the prices drop? Should we keep pushing forward? And then some asked me, is there a way we can compensate for the price increase by reducing the amount of wood that we use? Well, I mean, I can reduce the amount of wood, but can I save you money? And those conversations are what led me into the world of advanced framing. Advanced framing is just a term that we use in lieu of traditional or conventional framing in which the two phrases describe a set of rules that we use to frame our homes or in our buildings. Some of those rules would include wall stud spaced at 16 inches on center, load bearing headers that fill up most of the space in a wall cavity. But with advanced framing, we are looking to minimize the amount of structural wood framing that is absolutely necessary for a structurally sound home. One of the advantages of advanced framing is sustainability. So if having a LEED certified home is that important to you, and in most cases is not. But if it is, then you can earn points towards your LEED certification by going the advanced framing route. Another advantage of advanced framing is energy efficiency. By having studs spaced out wider than 16 inches on center, you can then fill in that space with more insulation, which helps saves on your heating and cooling bills. And the last benefit is obviously lumber costs. Less wood framing means less lumber costs. But if you've supplied an advanced framing package, let me know in the comments how your experience was and how much cost was offset from a conventionally framed home. Now these rules also apply to roof framing, but some of the common rules for an advanced floor framing system includes using longer span lengths for your joist, using engineered wood as your floor joist, whether that be eye joist, composite lumber, or glue lamb joist spaced 24 inches on center, and using floor sheeting thicker than three quarters of an inch. So by using long span joists and spacing them 24 inches on center, that ultimately reduces the total quantity of floor joists that you have for your entire system. However, that means you'll have deeper joists and you'll need to pay more attention to the performance of your floor as far as vibrations and deflection. Homeowners still expect solid stiff floors. So in combination with the engineered floor system, having a thicker floor sheathing is going to help create more stiffness. Now we mentioned this earlier, but the stud spacing is typically going to be at 24 inches on center. Anything beyond 24 inches on center will impact some of the requirements for your shear walls. So I looked back into the code and realized that wall stud spacing is maxed out at 24 inches on center. I didn't look to see if there were ways we can get around this, were there any exceptions, but let's just go with 24 inches on center for the rest of this video. Here are some details for framing your corners in such a way that these cavities can be insulated as opposed to traditional methods of framing the corners. It's common practice to fill this cavity with a header that's width is close to the depth of the wall framing. But with advanced framing, we only utilize the header size necessary regardless of the wall framing size. So if the header size is a single or a double ply, we'll set the header near the exterior sheathing and the rest of the cavity is insulated. And if the wall is non-load bearing, you can get away with a framing sequence like this. If you wanna go all in with advanced framing, there's a way you cannot utilize a header in a load bearing wall. This is called a structural panel box header where the plywood sheathing is placed on either one or two sides of the wall and nailed in such a pattern where it performs like a traditional header. You can read the International Residential Code or talk to a structural engineer to learn more about that. Now, as far as the wall top plate, it doesn't really matter if you use a double top plate or a single top plate. But if you're using a single top plate, then you need to align your floor or roof framing over top of your wall studs. Then you need to connect your framing directly to the wall stud 
utilizing some sort of metal fastener. Double top plates do not have this tolerance requirement. So if you are utilizing a single top plate, make sure that you coordinate your floor and roof packages with your wall package so that all of your framing falls into place. And there's your short guide to advanced framing. Let me know in the comments if you've utilized this system or you're planning to utilize this system and let me know how your experience goes.